The Michael Hatfield Remax team presents Real Estate and More. Bay Area real estate is different than in all of America. And why? What's up with home buyers? What's on sellers' minds? How is the market? And much, much more. Now, here's your host, Michael Hatfield. Welcome to the Real Estate and More show. I'm your host, Michael Hatfield. This show is about giving to others, not just during the holidays, but throughout the entire year. I have an extraordinary woman in studio this morning, a person many communities admire greatly. She is a person of determination and passion for those in need, as you would hope to see in a management team for a charitable organization. She has been with City Team Ministries for more than 15 years. I look forward to hearing about some of the recent accomplishments in the community. Please welcome my guest this morning, Miss Angela Aguilar. Welcome to the show, Angela. Thank you, Michael. I'm so glad to be here. It's wonderful to see you. Well, long before uh, I met you, your name rang out loud and clear in many places with a volume of respect that speaks wonders about your character. I have to say, where did Angela come from? to become such a rock star in the world serving those in need. So uh, my story is that I am passionate about helping the addicted and the homeless uh, because that's my story. You know, I was homeless and I was addicted to drugs and City Team gave me the opportunity to overcome my life challenges. So for me, um, it's only logical that I would be passionate about helping others overcome their life challenges and making sure that City Team is here for a long time for for people in need. I can tell you really feel it. It's uh, it's in there and it's coming out loud and clear. So dedicated, so qualified. How did they ever manage to get you to where you could be involved in the management of this unbelievable organization? Um, I have always accepted the challenges that were given to me and a uh, city team just continued to invest in me as I came up through one of their residential programs and worked as a case manager in their women's program and then started to take on more uh, positions of leadership. I was just willing to learn um, whatever I needed to do to be of most value to the ministry. And you just started and developed from there and the organization realized it and said, wow, we need to get someone like this on our staff. And that's where, where did you start with City Team other than that? I mean, what was your first position, so to speak? What did you do? So my first position with City Team was a case manager uh, for their women's program in San Jose women's program. Can you explain a little bit about that program? So uh, that program is called House of Grace and it is um, a residential program for women who are struggling with homelessness and addiction. Uh, it's a year-long program and there I, I walked women through their program as they did what I like to call life reconstruction in a year. <laughs> Just consider how daunting of a cha uh, you know a task that is. Mm -hmm. So where does does this extraordinary high level of passion to help others come from? From being there yourself, or do you feel it's from a higher power? So I believe that I'm called by by God. I mean, specifically, you know, my time as the executive director of City Team Oakland uh, was definitely something that I I felt was a calling. Uh, for me. I, I was born in Oakland. A lot of my early story is in Oakland. And as I um, began to work in downtown Oakland, I just connected with that um, really powerfully. And it just gave me a lot of passion and drive to help the people of that particular city. What would you say that particular city of Oakland's unique challenges are and has there been a good transformation accomplished there by city team? I mean, has city team done good there? Do you feel? I believe that we have. Um, you know, uh, Oakland has a lot of unique uh, challenges, but at the core of that city, there there's a lot of of good people that are just struggling. 
and this real need for uh, respect and community. And that's really what we seek to provide at City Team is a sense of community. Uh, yes, you know, a sense that, that you know, Jesus loves you and we do too. Um, so as we provide food and as we provide clothing, as we provide um, shelter for men and women and children, uh, we seek to... Um, empower people to become better it's interesting you said sense of community after any type of awful experience you know 9 11 i could really see it people come together with a sense of community and then they work together to get a, a good job done and i see that city team does that they have that city that sense of community that is so important to develop in order to do great so um i i just I just feel real strongly about it. So what services does City Team actually provide the community? So we provide a multiple of services. Uh, so we provide several uh, residential programs um, for men who are struggling with homelessness and or addiction, as well as nightly shelter, uh, food, um, daily hot meals, uh, showers in our facility, as well as clothing. We also provide a mobile food pantry that actually goes out to low income families to provide food boxes, um, as well as a, a, a residential program for women and their their children that is amazing that is just amazing and i know money always has to be an issue with everything that you do when you rely on people to give and with that just said you know they city team has a special to help uh those in need they serve thanksgiving meals and it's only like two dollars and 49 cents per meal if you'd like to give someone in need a thanksgiving meal you can go to donate.cityteam.org and it will take you right to a spot where you can give to those in need two dollars and 49 cents do some good because this organization that does so well there's no one really that does this type of service to the community let's let's see if we can help so just please keep that in mind so those hot meals that you distribute you not only distribute them out of your facilities and we'll take oakland as an example mm -hmm. but you also have a mobile truck to go to help people that are immobile i would think yeah, so our hot meals are primarily out of our facilities. In in San Jose, we actually do have a, a food truck that goes out to the unhoused and, and serves hot meals. Um, but that's specific to the city. But we, we go out and we provide food boxes throughout our community. And the reason why we do that is because, um, you know, these low income families that are struggling, a lot of the time they don't have transportation. Um, you know, trying to get on the bar with two young kids, like you're left with this, do I leave my kids at home? You know, do I, uh, do I take them with me? And uh, so, so it's a struggle. I'll never forget the time that somebody was standing in our line and I seen her and she was literally carrying uh, her her baby who was about 18 months old and I asked her how far she walked and she had walked um, a good four or five blocks and had stand and stood in that line for a half an hour and that's really where um, the vision or the drive in me to make the mobile food pantry started to to really become a reality for me uh, because I realized how hard it was for these families to get down to our facility to get food. So you actually were the initiator of that within City Team. For City Team Oakland, it was a vision of mine. We definitely um, partnered with City Team San Jose. So City Team San Jose made a, did the program first. We're gonna take a short break, be right back. Welcome to the Real Estate Minute with REMAX expert, Michael Hatfield. What does an agent do to get a home sold? Typically, an agent will prepare a comparative market analysis so he knows the home's value, then creates a marketing plan tailored just for your home. 
With these plans, he promotes the home globally and locally in social media, publications, open houses, all for the purpose of getting your home front and center with prospective buyers. As an agent, how do you get it sold, Michael? We do each and every item in the plan. Negotiate vigorously on the client's behalf on inspection repairs, staging, and importantly, the deal itself. We do everything we can to get the deal done and closed. Call 925-322-7775 now to schedule an appointment or complimentary home analysis. And now back to our show. So we were talking off air for a few moments about addiction. It's interesting. I, I grew up in a lower middle class family. My father worked, my mother worked, uh, but I always had everything I needed and I never went across the line to be an addict. But I can see with all that we have around us, how easy it would be for someone to actually fall into that that mire and and have um, difficulties with it. So we were talking about how someone actually gets there. Your thoughts on that, Angela? So there is a lot of ways that people people get there. But, you know, as we internalize experiences, as, as we, you know, as we grow up, you know, those, how we internalize them can isolate us. And, and that's what happens is a person feels more and more isolated and distraught. It just makes sense for them to turn to some kind of relief. And the other thing uh, that I think that we continue to see is people starting to use these substances younger and younger, uh, which creates just a physiological addiction much, um, much more easily. And stronger, too, I'd imagine, because yeah. with, when a child's brain is developing to induce a substance like this, it's going to have different effects than on someone whose brain may not be developing as a youngster is I would and what do you think that the outcome uh, with younger folks taking drugs and becoming addicts what do you think that uh, the possibility of turning it around someday is there is there a, a hope for that there is. There's always hope. Uh, you know, I I started uh, using substances at a very young age, and you know what made the difference for me uh, when I came to City Team is I found a, a loving Christ-centered community uh, that was willing to come alongside me and support me. You know, in um, in every way. You know, spiritually. You know, with my education, with my life skills. Skills. And that's what it really, it really takes. It really takes a community to come alongside someone and, and being willing to, to support them through their challenges. I think purpose is something that's, that's very important in life and having a purpose from an early age. I mean, I, I wanted to be an airline pilot of all things and a guy coming out of lower middle class, you can't do it. Everybody tells you, you can't do it. There's a fuel shortage going on and they only take military guys. You're going to have to go in a military. You're going to have to do this. You're going to take that. But somehow in my mind, God gave me this direction that you can do it mm -hmm. and to have that purpose that is the hope that is needed to debtor your interest in something i would think yeah. from uh, from addiction so to speak do you find that having someone coming alongside a person that is addicted is overwhelmingly important it is. It's overwhelmingly important to have someone come alongside you to encourage you. And like you said, there's that sense of, of purpose. You know, a lot of City Team's graduates, I mean, I, I, I work with City Team and I, I, uh, I feel passionate, but there are many other graduates of our programs that choose to work in the field and find purpose in helping other people. And that's one of the things that we really try to encourage at, at City Team as we're, you know, developing people. You know, I've met some of your graduates and they are amazing, amazing people. Some of them has, have actually been to, to prison. Some have, you know, been to the bottom and have worked their way back up and they have that brightness in their eyes, that, that purpose, I can help other people. Mm -hmm. And that's what I see in you, Angela, is I see your eye just sparkles when you start talking about helping other people. 
because quite frankly, um, at the end of the day, you can make all the money in the world and it's really going to come down to what have you done to help your neighbor and to be caring and giving to those others. Now, you mentioned something uh, about the women's program. Again, can you give us some details on that program? At City Team, we've actually grown our, our women's ministry uh, tremendously. Uh, we opened our our women's program in, in Oakland in 2019, and that place is for a, a woman and a woman who has children who's suffering from crisis. So it's it's very it's very open ended. That crisis could be homelessness. That crisis could be domestic violence. That crisis could be addiction. And what we do is we give them a safe place uh, for six months to a year or as long as they need it uh, to grow and to rebuild their lives. Uh, we've also expanded our our services for women in San Jose. In our other other remote cities, we have also opened women's programs. That is, that's just absolutely uh, enviable to to just think that that city team is out there to help people the way that it does, and especially women. You know, women in crisis with two little ones. Um, th- that is to me something that a person is either going to you know say I'm going to go in a certain direction and I'm going to try to do better, or it's going to be more difficult in life having people come alongside that are graduates of the program seems to be the real key it's almost a pyramid effect of taking of taking um what they have learned and using it to help other people it's uh it's an amazing so you have helped women and these women come along and help other women that's that's actually how the mentorship works is there like a formal structure within city team to do this or uh, is it just something that that comes uh, natural so there it's a little of both uh, we do have a formal a formal structure as people go through the program and then also uh, take the opportunity uh, possibly to intern with us. Uh, so that's just an opportunity for them to extend their care and their training with us. And then they take on role of leadership in the community. And then at that point, that's really when they're mentoring and walking alongside the women who are entering the program. In my family, uh, there were... A- a total of six six boys that were uncles to me and I have to tell you that every one of them had alcohol issues mm-hmm. and I think at a young age I may have been very susceptible to that now not so much but at a time in my life I needed to have purpose and I could not hide behind the alcohol because it made me feel like I wasn't a strong person, Mm -hmm. but it's not about that. It's about that addiction due to that chemical that's there. So I came from that uh, type of area too. And uh, two of my uncles, my father, um, they just quit drinking altogether. You know, I, I think that alcohol as one type of addiction, it wants to isolate you. It wants to keep you lonely. It wants to keep you needing that particular drug, does it not? What do you know, alcoholism? Well, you know, alcoholism is, um, it, it can sneak up on you. And, you know, um, certain and, you know, certain substances, it's it's they're so socially acceptable. Right. Right. Um, So which can also make it hard if a person is not in the kind of community that really understands what addiction is. I would say that um, the main thing that alcoholism and addiction does to you is it tricks you into thinking you're trapped there. And, you know, you start thinking that there's no way out and there's no other way that I can I can function, that I need this relief. And those those beliefs are just overwhelming. I saw this clip with uh, Matthew Perry, who recently uh, passed 
do um, to whatever reason, but he was explaining that, man, he says, alcoholism is tough because it does sneak up on you and it is there and it wants to isolate you. So the one good thing about, not one good thing, but one of the great things about City Team is that you're, you have a place where people can go, they can get a meal, they can spend the night sometimes, and they can work with others have who have been there. Mm-hmm. And so they're going to be able to take advice from them where coming from a sister or a brother or a wife, say, hey, you need to do something, may not work, you know. Yes. So if any of our listeners would like to be part of helping those in need, you can donate $2.49 and provide a Thanksgiving meal to a person who needs it. And if you'd like to help at the end of this show, go to donate.cityteam.org and help in this worthy cause. Write down donate.cityteam.org. Angela, have you seen families be impacted in an extremely positive way by what City Team has done in the neighborhood. Can you give us some examples to where, you know, your outreaches, your holiday outreaches, your normal outreaches have helped? Yes. I mean, I have been fortunate uh, to know some of the families that we do outreach with uh, very well. And you know, it's amazing how much just a box of food and a word of encouragement can change a family. I, I met this uh, this one woman um, probably nine years ago now, and when she came to us, uh, she was struggling uh, with an unhealthy domestic violence relationship and her her son was was special needs and you know she would come and she would talk to me and I would just encourage her and and now she's she's working uh, she's no longer in that uh, that unhealthy relationship uh, her son is is thriving and and learning and doing well and not acting out anymore and a lot of that uh, she contributes to her her community at, at City Team that continued to encourage her to go down the right path and told her that she could, you know, do something different with her life. And the level of success that City Team is going to feel from that has to be overwhelming inside your heart. You have yeah. love to share. That could be a really good slogan if you're not already using it. Love to share City yeah. Team Ministries. You know, I've heard so much about this uh, brand new facility, this kitchen in your Oakland facility, I believe. Yes. How has it made a difference in the lives of the people? people of the community you serve. I really believe that the building and the, the remodeled kitchen and facility is making a huge difference. I mean, we are able to uh, comfortably uh, serve 500 meals a day out of that kitchen now. And, you know, before we did construction, it was always too hot or too cold. And, and now we're able to provide a, a comfortable environment that, that's, that's peaceful to, to be in. We always had inner peace, but... <laughs> You you need to have a little help with your facility. I believe whenever the city team ministries organization improves, the community grows along with it. It's that sense of community again, people working together in a common, for a common goal or towards a common goal. And has the political environment, um, without getting political too much, it would seem that the political environment in the city of Oakland would come alongside you to support some of these people that, that really really need it so badly, wouldn't you say? I mean, I'm not asking you to say they have or they haven't, but it seems like they would want to reinforce their efforts, the city of Oakland, to help everything that you do to help people. Yes, I mean, that would be be the hope. That would be the hope. Yeah, my mom's the word on this one, but uh, hey guys, if you're in the politics in Oakland or anywhere in the Bay Area, because it's not just Oakland, it's San Francisco and San Jose in this area that uh, City Team functions to help these people that are in need and they share their love with them to help them. So what are some of the most difficult times you recall about the remodel? 
You went through a big remodel, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so we did a major construction project on our facility downtown uh, that was a historic building that I like to say it had about 100 years of deferred maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so there were a lot of, of trying times uh, during the year and a half uh, that it took us to to remodel that building uh it was it was supposed to take six months and i would say that um the most challenging uh thing during that time was the striving to have no interruption in our services there was always a a push and pull between you know the the construction and the delays and then how do we how do we still get this food out how do we still help these people that that need us and that was always that was always the tension uh you know the um thanksgiving of 2021 uh we we loaded and unloaded about 3,000 pounds of food (laughs) in and out of our freezer trucks Mm -hmm. and that kind of thing to make sure that Thanksgiving happened. So just balancing those things with the actual management of construction and making sure that construction was happening on the timeline it was supposed to happen was a major struggle. You know, I think that when the building was going through the major remodel, didn't I hear that you had to house the people that were in the program elsewhere and then the construction took longer where those people were to have been able to move back in and then there was some issues that happened there and fortunately you were able to get your muscles going and and make things happen to where it all did come off yes that is amazing to me just totally amazing what do you see for the future of city team not only in oakland but in all of the rest of the five cities is it five cities yes it is it's five cities uh so we are in oakland uh san jose san francisco and then portland oregon and chester pennsylvania you know i i think that um city team is in a really good place and i just see us continuing to grow and have a positive effect on our communities i i totally have to agree with you um there's no one out there is doing this you know you're you feel like uh, the lone ranger <laughs> but i know that you're not you have a really great organization there listeners who wish to be part of city teams thanksgiving meals for the needy the cost to feed one person with a holiday meal is just two dollars and 49 cents that's two dollars and 49 cents it's simple to give just go to donate.cityteam.org that's donate dot cityteam.org to help city team change lives for the better give for the holiday purpose or to become a part of this ongoing humanitarian effort it doesn't take much if we all help just a little bit your gift will be valued more than you know thank you angela for sharing your story with us today as well as pointing out the wonderful efforts of city team it is heartwarming to hear your passion your determination to overcome Massive hurdles to help others who really need that help. Thank you and happy Thanksgiving to you and all of City Team. It is time for a short break. You've been listening to The Real Estate and More Show. Topics of the day, interesting people, and real estate. Listen to archived real estate and more shows by going to michaelhatfieldhomes.com forward slash radio. That's michaelhatfieldhomes.com forward slash radio. We'll be back in just a moment with our next special guest. Stay tuned.